conventional to do so. And there is, as you're well aware, a lot of difference between different people in different schools of thought. Um, now, we want to go a look at uh, another thing, which of course is a, an observer's measure language. And usually many observers. Get an observer's metal language? Yeah. Usually several observers. In fact, I can think of no instance where there is but one possible observer, excepting in Landau's construction, which is very nice, but it puts a bit of the observer into each object. How does that work? It works by setting up an object as something which is observed and generated in the course of observation. The uh, coexistence of objects becomes due to the synchronization of these systems. And so the existence of, for example, a storage or memory, actually it's literally a memory, it consists in a structure of synchronized elements which are each of them containing an observational part uh, which swaps around an exchange relation in fact, uh, between observers and, and objects and this is an exchange relation between exchange relations and it's very interesting observers <coughs> have meta language and I'll refer to that consistently if I may uh, as L star. Well, these will be useful distinctions of course of our discussion. Um, <coughs> it's about, well, it's not magic about them at all. They're not um, little world words of distinction or something. They are simply there to um, make life easier. <laughs> Believe me, there's no other reason for them there. They don't have any, any sort of enormous philosophical significance or something. This, this isn't true. Um, they are, um, are there as convenient props. Now, the um, question is would you like to deal, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, with concepts first? or sharing concepts first. I'm here to tally up you. Paul seems to show preference or share the preference earlier when he was saying you shouldn't go back to the diagram. Uh, for Yeah, sure. Uh, dealing uh, no, I'm making a joke out of it. For dealing with, with, with uh, sharing concepts first. And I think you may be right in some sense. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, You'd like to do concepts. Well, in that case, we're going to leave this thing hanging for a bit. Oh, why go into what a concept is, and we'll come back to it and talk about. So we're, we're going to branch from here, and for the benefit of, of recording purposes, I'm going to put to what is concept on previous pages. Previous sheets and what is to what is concept sharing and agreement over um, understanding. On previous sheets and different previous sheets. And that is there simply for reference, which these sheets are laid out in order. And otherwise, it would be extremely difficult to know where in the world things went to. Uh, <coughs> concept, crude idea, and what is what concept sharing. And these are the crude pictures, and from these crude pictures we will branch to the crude places. And the crude picture 
of what is a concept is the bundle of productive and reproductive. Bundle of what is that? Of productive. Productive. And reproductive operations. Uh, a bundle of partly coherent procedures. And these I'm going to expand open to application and applied on some occasions. signified by X sign. That's what X means, execute or apply. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, could you read that again? That's yes, the last part. That, so partly uh, a bundle of uh, partly, uh, partly shared, partly coherent, sorry, partly coherent, part, I let T out partly coherent procedures open to application and applied on some occasions, the application operation being designated X without commitment to what kind of operation that may be. Uh, the result is either internal or external is a behavior or description such as, for example, a mental image. <coughs> a behavior, an internal behavior, or it can be uh, an external behavior. And likewise, an external behavior may lead to a transmissible description. I call this a personal, con a personal concept of, let us say, T, whatever a T is. I like this word T. Uh, we can draw a very crude picture of that by enclosing these things, and here we're going to just look like a hierarchy in a box. And that box is in a what? I don't know. Uh, first of all, what these things do is produce members of this bundle, which it can be done by taking input from there, and from the result, or can be done by taking comparable pairs, other, other, meaning other concepts, or other results, the flying concept. Okay? So a constructive operation could indeed be. <coughs> might be constructed in terms of a wide variety of different other concepts as well as reproduced from itself. And in fact, the reproduction may depend upon uh, the, the coexistence of several other concepts. Mm -hmm. Now, the type of these operations which is common Right. It's concept like thing. This is con type. And this is <coughs> the complement. Complementary form. And I mean complementary literally. The first ones are concept type. Oh. And I mean complementary, literally, that one can't exist without the other. And, of course, one ought to add that on execution, okay, so X goes in there, X goes in there, okay, and, of course, this could also give rise to something 
and forms mm-hmm. behavior as well. <coughs> they, basically, it's a true picture of a doctor. And uh, I could uh, draw a very crude picture of an understanding or a concept sharing, and so crude is not very satisfactory. Uh, so how do I indicate that it might go outside of this enclosure? Well, maybe. And similarly, maybe. By means of in L. In other words, L is beginning to figure, putting this as imagined as a medium, such as a brain, in which uh, this operation takes place, or even a brain, it could be a suitable kind of machinery. Uh, then the language is rather like that of a medium pervading the whole lot of things. And <coughs> so whereas this is a personal concept, T, the language. call it public language of conversation has public concept or shared meaning. Partly shared. at least. I put all this stuff down because it's simply to facilitate, I'm sorry it's a bit tedious, but simply to facilitate uh, reference later. Uh, and I'm what exactly, really writing down what I'm saying. No. What exactly, what, if, what kind of a symbolic system are personal concepts expressed in? Uh, they seem to be expressed in a symbol, in a symbolism comparable to one of our natural languages, but I can see no reason to doubt the existence of imageless thought, hence I'm not entirely sure. Of what thought? Imageless thought, the Wurzburg School and the Frankfurt School, and I have no reason at all to doubt that this, that there is imageless thought, so I can't be so dogmatic. Let us say, uh, the languages of the modalities, the languages we normally use in one way or another actually, together with certain other languages that may not be used or shared, uh, or at any rate cannot be described, mm-hmm. in the languages available to us, uh, by any means, they may be suggested tragically perhaps, uh, but uh, I, I mean, in other words, I'd like to suggest that this is something in L that actually forms the content, the shared, the knowledge of, and beliefs in L, or shared beliefs and the shared meanings of L. Um, the, the, these are the personalized meanings of L and are subscripted by whoever has them. Yeah. Or, and I want to have to say whatever participant has them, because I deliberately haven't put a box around this thing. I just call it an entity, an abstract. Uh, and it has a minimality property, actually. None of this could exist. This can't have an existential operator unless it's got productive, reproductive loop around it. Uh, so that in a sense, this is complementary to this. There's a complementarity principle, which I take more or less for granted by saying con- type con. Uh, complementarity con con type. In other words, I'm saying these are both of type con. I'm actually saying also that one can't exist without the other, and there is a different sort of complementarity here, which is this complementarity. Uh, the result and the process that gives rise to the result. Okay. There? Mm-hmm.
or if you like procedure and the process that might be another way of putting it. The like choice of words is not too important, providing we stick to them. So let's say the complementarity. You can't have a process which has no procedure. You can't have a procedure which isn't executed to make process. It is not in in a, in this uh, in this field. Uh, the execution of type con things here is giving rise to type con things here. In this case, the execution of type con things takes as input things of type behaviors or descriptions and things of type concepts, either its own or those outside. So, all right, I'm going to put down there other cons, other behaves. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or descriptor. Okay. What's that word? Description. I, I think it's clear enough. That behavior description. Can you read that? Is that sufficient to a note? If I leave this stuff, can you make sense of it? I think so. Well, it's quite important actually, because otherwise <coughs> you're lacking an awful lot of um, stuff which I promised to revise. Yes, no, and I'm trying to make it as short as possible to avoid unnecessary kind of draftsmanship yes. and so forth. I'd just like to get the complementarity of the system straight. Uh, good. Well, the, the in saying these things, these productive and reproductive operations, which are very much what Wertheim and that matter Bartlett, many other people actually, Lewin even Sachs, uh, talked about as productive and reproductive. Um, in Wertheimer's case, I'm referring in particular to the later edition of um, um, productive thinking. In George Kelly's case, I'm referring to Mildred Shaw's book on um, becoming a punk, uh, personal scientist, or, or George Cott Kelly's originally book, original books, which were, I think, 56, a couple of volumes, Personal Constructs Theory. Uh, both the time referring to remembering and thinking, and uh, two different books, remembering and thinking. Um, and delivering to a variety of papers. Uh, <coughs> And uh, incidentally, this is not meant to be exhaustive. It's meant to be suggestive. Uh, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to deliver a lecture to uh, uh, an audience um, or something like that. I'm trying to discuss with peers what is happening. Therefore, you will excuse me. I, I should put Vygotsky and Piaget should have gone into the very similar notion. Jung should certainly go in. So should Freud. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so actually, should a large number of other people. Ah. ACH, not as uh, of the um, uh, power of belief experiments, but as a matter of fact, he, he might go in as well. <laughs> the, the modern one, the one who did these Monday experiments, many people in the room and stuff, and getting them to getting them to be incredible. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, and uh, Wolkowitz, I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to, to come across him because I heard about him a great deal from Wolkowitz, the, the psychiatrist chap. My respect to Bidst, actually, and, and he quotes him as saying that I have treated the experiments in architecture schools, in, arch in, an, in an architecture school, um, and it was terribly interesting, terribly revealing. Using instead of geometrical figures, uh, using pictures of buildings, well known. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> fantastic effect of higher scores on more realistic materials, higher scores that were of people who said, I must be wrong, I was said this is crazy. The, then he reports uh, considerably higher, uh, which is interesting, actually, and more realistic materials if they're plausible in some sense. It's funny. It, 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 you might like to convey that to him. I am... Um, He's not alive anymore. Isn't he? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you really? ASCH. Oh dear, I had the impression you still around. Was, must have died quite early. Oh dear, I'm sorry. What a shame. 
So I heard. My respects and um, regret. Uh, now, <clears throat> what is a, I, I will submit the uh, uh, a logical, sorry, I uh, link with pu public concept, shared concept, is the stuff of language. It's the norm, the consensual agreement, the faith on which we act, the belief or beliefs to which we adhere, what we think of each other, as well as what we think of particulars of one kind or another, or those things we choose to regard as particulars, because particulars are very differently viewed by different cultures. Just to do with culture, civilization, growth, evolution. And it is a very real thing and if I call these things here, uh, 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 the, these entities down here, type uh, descara, meaning also behavior, uh, or if you like, you see, I can substitute the whole thing by saying a concept and its application. Stuff of L applications. And of complementary pairs. Type. Kong or Prog. I put that in for reference later, I'm afraid I haven't defined it yet. And comma type descara description or we have. Now I hope the notation is clear enough. Uh, it's not as clear as it might be, perhaps. The brackets in here are not functional brackets on which things are operating. They are, they are things uh, intended to be qualifiers inside an ordered pair, which is an ordered pair. So what is the complementary pair type cons? This is complementary pair under execution. Yeah. I didn't see the brackets. Type con or proc, which I haven't yet defined, but I intend to do so. And type descra description, or perhaps. And I, 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 if my internal brackets confuse you, I'm sorry. It's clear, but just or behavior. Yeah, or behavior. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to establish some kind of notational scheme, which which yeah, allows us to, to draw things without. Um, without too much ambiguity and without too much chat around and qualification in each one. <laughs> now, uh, <coughs> what I mean by complementary is that under some universal operation such as X, Uh, if I say that uh, execution or application is better, but X is embedded in the, in the literature of the conversation there, I'm afraid. A debt to artificial intelligence. Um, it is. I'm, I'm no joking. I mean, it may be a bad debt, uh, but on the other hand, it's uh, it's owed to. Uh, uh, that, that's one of the things owed to artificial intelligence, I think, I mean, this kind of talk about, instead of concept application, which is in fact a more usual term, we'll talk about concept execution. And uh, we'll conceive of this as a bundle of procedures. Uh, and uh, that's what I've said up there, a bundle of procedures. So it could be of type just procedure, or it could be of type 
tongue, a bundle of these, which are partly coherent. And the complementary, complementarity under X means that if one exists, the other exists. So the productive operations and the bundle of procedures are the complements. Yeah, and another complementary pair under X, but personal X, if you like. Uh, I will call this under, under P individual X. A rather nice action in notation, or as that is under X. And that says above that it says complementary con P individuation X. What the other the other words there type? Uh, sorry, complementarity con con type. Okay. Uh, I put I put an ordered pair around that. Okay. Elementarity and uh, P individuated X again. Uh, and this is between con application con. Mm -hmm. If you don't, and the ordered brackets do mean ordered brackets in this case, okay? So you've got a couple of different things. This is the result of that, sure. It's <coughs> one when we are saying they're both of type con. Um, that is the result of one of those. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> now, therefore, uh, I'm thinking of L agreements as actually having implicit in them if they're called understandings and maybe in all cases but certainly in the case I call an understanding or a fully observable hard datum of a sharing concept that it isn't just the case of description or something exists out there it is the case that uh, there is a, a generally available, shared by a number of people, description together with some operations which are employed to create that description. Mm -hmm. And these may be perfect or imperfect, it doesn't matter. And Apart, you see, there isn't really a difference in my mind but I put uh, between, let's say, this is all of this. Is, uh, you don't have, have any red pencil, do you, Paul? Uh, I, I could find small red ones last night only, but that would do. Uh, you have a China marker or a yellow. And um, I prefer a yeah, red one, if I may. I can't see the others. Oh yeah, can you use it That's all right. If you don't cram it too hard, uh, it won't break. Uh -huh. It's slightly delicate. Is it? It's delicate. Yeah. Yeah, try it. I think it should be all right. Sort of. I can put. Uh, may I think I can say uh, a great deal simply by sort of indicating that. This okay. is medium. It is possible to use it, but it's very difficult to use it without pressing it harder. Thank you. It's very difficult to use it without pressing it so hard that it's liable to, to bust. In medium, like one or more grain. Okay. And this is, as it were, Uh, 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 and um, that's the order encompass there. Right. Uh, in 
um, in L medium. The verbal term wasn't quite so wrong as he sometimes said to them. Certain Marshall went a bit off the nut, but on the other hand, actually, Derek is much more sane, but <coughs> I have no objection uh, at all to Lewin, uh, sorry, to, to, to Lewin in some respects, and his message of medium stuff is, in fact, containing a great deal of the, I, I don't find it terribly clearly expressed, and would find it clear sense. I mean, I find it rather sloppy, personally. But I, actually, the, there's a good deal of sense in what he's talking about, because in, the, in a way, language is that in which brains are universal, and in which these things can exist, uh, and do exist in profusion, and do not necessarily depend upon brains. Though one can make certain statements about what they don't exist in, like, for example, computing machines, as per present concern. Uh, they may be simulated in computing machines, but it isn't. But they don't and can't uh, have an existence. Uh, their exists operator uh, cannot be uh, uh, applied to a computing machine. Really, it can only be used as a channel for discussion through or converse through. In other words, one can pipe bits of this through a computing machine between those things, and that may be an extraordinary useful thing too. And this I'm going to call in a participant one or more. more. Okay. Ready him? Or in a P individual. P individual, which is an organization with closed and information liaison system. Okay. Now, am I clear so far mm -hmm. in this? Yep. We will now make reference back to the previous diagram uh, in order that it is not necessary to recapitulate all of this. And <coughs> when I talk about a stable concept, I mean a thing like that. And when I talk about a stable personal concept, I mean a thing like that. In a medium like one or more brains, in fact, in a participant with a named, which is a named P individual, or one or more of them, and literally is in a conversation. What do you mean by use the term stable? The existential operator. Stability is in my mind the same thing. And this is what this means. There exists something because it is reproduced. Uh, Kurt Lewin, in a notion um, discussed by Reichenbach, in one of his books, I forget which one, and it's in both in his scientific philosophy and in his uh, uh, philosophy of probability. It discusses that current vision of Kurt Lewin's uh, gen identity. Uh, that in a certain sense you can say that I am the same person today, tomorrow, etc., even though I'm totally changing. <coughs> this can be applied to anything. Operator applies insofar as there is a reproductive and productive process which maintains some features and gen identity needs to be claimed. Yeah, sure. I, mean, I just don't go along with taking accepting for artificial use in the same way. In artificial, I will divide languages into hierarchies, uh, but. Uh, the, uh, that is a different matter. I might put something else down on this stage. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's an arbitrary thing. I talk about a set. Uh, and of course, the axiom of choice uh, begs the question of what the existential operator means. 
have I, there is a, another one, choose. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, why is there another one, choose? Well, I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I, I find it an extremely interesting puzzling problem, uh, and I, I think there is, but I mean, I'm not, I don't think the action of choice is entirely fair. It's a getaway. And Lepkin would, I think, agree with this to some extent. Uh, as he wrote a paper in which I think the action of choice, all the equivalent axioms of set theory, was removed, and he showed the existence of so called epsilon chains. Uh, which amounts to saying that any set is a quine individual, really, and showed the existence of entirely self-referential chains and chains that are not entirely self-referential, containing as connector of the epsilon operation of membership. In one of his earliest papers at uh, BCL. <coughs> Um, an extension, extension in many ways of his excellent and beautiful work on, on evolutionary self-reproductive devices and on other topics, logic and philosophy as well as mathematics. Uh, so, so can we can bring you back once to go over one more point there mm -hmm. on, on the... Uh, Although I believe I understand it in some sense, that I haven't heard you formulate it in terms of the existence operator and the role of brains and machines. I like that. I wonder if you well, know. if I say something exists, I submit I'm saying it is reproduced and probably is productive. Uh, but in the limiting case, it would simply be reproduced. And it exists because it is reproduced. And I haven't yet committed myself to in what it is reproduced, in what kind of pathology. What's the difference between it being produced and reproduced? The produce would be action of choice, applied altruism. It says, uh, in terms of action of choice, having got some that are being reproduced, mm -hmm. there is another that can be reproduced, which I produce and choose outside of this set. Uh, so if I have a counting successor of some sort, and I haven't yet committed myself to what kind of successor I'm talking about, uh, and I don't intend to yet, uh, the because um, I don't believe it's the same successor operation for all possible counting schemes at all. Uh, the, and I have, would have to convince very heavily otherwise, very heavily, because I frankly don't think it's a particularly plausible assumption to make. Uh, quite often boss. Uh, it to be reproduced in something is just to say it exists, and to be produced is just to say there is an axiom of choice inherent in the system whereby at least another one can be created or captured and brought into a set which yeah. exists. Yes. In this sense, another way of imagining it is, is, is the reproduced means it already has been produced right. and we can get it again mm -hmm. should we desire. Well, or production is, an, is kind of additivity where you're adding something new that wasn't production there. May, may, yeah. Production may... Expanding may, a set as opposed to choosing from amongst the elements yeah. of the set. Another way of imagining it is, is that uh, if you were making a device that had this nature, one way to exhibit it was, was have it sort of be producing, reproducing its entire repertoire of activities and behaviors all the time. Mm -hmm. That is to say, it's like a churning ball, mm -hmm. and you may stop the ball, and you see you have a behavior, but the, the, all the behaviors are sort of mm -hmm. running around at the same time, and you just uh, let one out of the cave. So, in that sense, I mean, reproduce. I think also has a, in this sense, a connotation of uh, a much more dynamic entity than something that is produced, because is produced is once we produced it. You know, we, we may produce this. Reproducing is, is uh, just as a species that we produce has to be doing it all the time. You know, we're doing it quite this moment, but the whole notion of a, of a species that reproduces itself is a species that, although right at this very instant it's not reproducing itself, 
is continually in the process of reproducing. Mm -hmm. We are all sitting here reproducing ourselves. Can you keep an eye on the on the tape recorder, Paul? Yeah, because, uh, well, I mean, do you want me to be responsible no, for I'm it? Looking. Yeah. So uh, I, mean, exactly. I, I just it, don't hear it, the thing. It, 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 also, it has that connotation. <coughs> This reproducing notion, uh, reproducing notion, is also uh, distinct from a, a theory of memory that might be talk about. Uh, you know, I can I can produce a memory of mother if you want me to. Uh, rather implies that somehow there is some sort of access to something that I can go and produce mother from mm -hmm. if you want me to. Uh, a reproducing memory, on the other hand, is something that I might think of, for example, that uh, the memories of mother are reproducing themselves all by themselves all the time. I mean, it, yeah. That, yeah. That, that you might imagine that we, right at the moment you're not reproducing. But it, it, so, so there's a connotation here of a theory of how you remember something. Yeah. You remember something because, in fact, all of your memories are continually in the no. state of reproducing themselves. I think it's fair to say that both Heinz and I, at any rate, are entirely insistent upon this point that it, etymologically and otherwise, memory is not storage. It is, uh, the storage may be reproductive, incidentally, and frequently is. Memory is recomputation. Mm -hmm. yes, or and, reproduction. And, and so the notion here is, it, it, we're not, I'm not, we're not suggesting here yeah, yeah. that every memory of yours is simultaneously being processed by, and reproduced, but that just as a species, when we say a piece of species is reproducing itself, even if it's not in the exact act of uh, uh, giving birth or copulation or whatever you want to call the act of reproduction, we still say a species is re reproducing itself because it is in yeah. that process at all yeah. times. Well, I don't know of any organism which isn't so thing. I That's mean, right. So uh, the notion here is to say uh, that memory is memories, yeah. things, concepts are continually reproducing themselves in the I same mean, sense that species is continually yeah. reproducing okay. themselves. Okay. I don't think there's anything terribly outrageous about these notions. It's simply that they, or unusual about these notions. It's simply that they're often glossed and just left. And I refuse to gloss them or give them. Yes, uh, no, that's, that's have done persist consistently, uh, persistently, not persistently, like persistently. Uh, and the whole business of cybernetics, and uh, to my mind, the, the job of cybernetics, one of the main jobs of cybernetics, is just not to take the taken for granted, uh, not rejected, but to, to see what it is, and to give a, a deeper interpretation to it. Otherwise, I don't see why cybernetics has the claim to be interdisciplinary. Let's go to uh, or let alone unified. Let, let me make and I believe it is. One more additive remark here, referring to uh, flashing back or forward, whichever way it is, is this notion of uh, a theory that is about a reproducing structure for that reason, rather than a static of this storage structure, mm -hmm. which is also related to the difference between an entailment mesh and a mere semantic net. A mere semantic net is just storage. Now, okay. gentlemen, like, while you were chatting, this is a linked list. This is oh. uh, a linked list is not reproducible. <coughs> well, oddly enough, it may be, but it not may, at but that level. It usually, in fact, it, it usually is even in, in a magnetic core storage, certainly in any dynamic storage. But it happens the identity operators are put on it to themselves actually in the dynamic storage, and the domain storage is of one sort or another, or the switching storage is uh, maintained by preventing a hysteresis jump. The point I wish to make is is that what one wants to add to the notion of just having some sort of linked list is to incorporate the mm -hmm. notion that something can't exist unless it is reproduced yeah. and reproducing, and therefore why not incorporate that very sensible notion? into the structure of the way you represent the knowledge in the first place. Yes. For example, if you took these notions here of L0, L1, these strut, one might say uh, Jeffrey and L1 is talking about linked lists or similar data structures uh, which are reproducing at L0 because they don't fall apart, for example, or they maybe have a legal point in them, whatever they are. But uh, we have, I don't know what happens to those. The garbage collector takes them and doesn't like them. But at L1, it isn't reproducing, whereas we could easily make a model of uh, a self-reproducing or even evolutionary type 
uh, a syntactical sort of machine, a Turing machine, uh, it is entirely syntactical, it has an interpretation in that device, in fact, and in possible interpretations given to the symbols, but it doesn't help us very much when we get different structures which evolve in a Lovecraft type series of automata. Uh, it doesn't, uh, we, we know they're different, and we know they're always going to be different because they're appropriate characteristics and mathematics of things which show that there will always be uh,